Okay, good morning everybody. Just wanted to uh, do a little review of chapter one and sort of give you a little bit of um, insight into chapter two. So the spreadsheet that I'm going to be using this morning uh, comes off of the ULEARN site. It's under miscellaneous course documents and it's this debit and credit worksheet. So that's what I'm going to be using uh, this morning. Uh, for this little bit of lecture here. So the order in which you're going to put together your uh, financial statements is you're going to put together your income statement first, you're gonna, then you're going to uh, move your net income into your retained earnings statement, and then your ending retained earnings balance then flows into your balance sheet. So to really get the picture of how these financial statements are flowing into one another and how they actually fit together, I think you need to get a big picture view of what um, the accounts are actually looking like and how they're functioning. So this is an overall sort of picture of what the accounting system looks like. So we're going to sort of start with the balance sheet, work backwards, um, to the income statement, the retained earnings statement. So again, overall, assets have to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So you've got all of your assets and maybe even some contra assets, which we'll talk about in later chapters. You've got your liabilities, and then you've got everything that is uh, affecting your owner's equity. Now, most people are totally okay with these columns over here. But what they start having problems with is this retained earnings column, okay? So in the retained earnings column, think about what the retained earnings statement looks like. You're talking about the beginning retained earnings, okay? And then you're going to add a net income or subtract a net loss, which is going to be the revenues and expenses that we're going to account for. And then we're going to subtract the dividends from that. So once all of those things happen and we go through the process at the end of the year, which we haven't quite got into yet, once we update all the accounts and zero out the revenues, expenses, and dividends, all of these balances and these three accounts right here roll up to retained earnings. So let's say for instance you had first year you had zero retained earnings you had uh, maybe a hundred thousand in revenues. You had uh, seventy-five thousand in expenses, and maybe you had ten thousand in dividends. So basically, you've got a zero over here in retained earnings. You've got a hundred thousand here in revenues. You've got seventy-five thousand in expenses, and then you've got ten thousand in dividends. Okay, so when we put together that retained earnings statement, the beginning retained earnings for the year is going to be zero. And within all the individual account balances in the accounting um, system, the retained earnings balance is going to show a balance of zero all year long throughout the first year. Then as we earn revenues, as we incur expenses, and as we uh, declare dividends, those items are taken care of in these three accounts. Okay, So then when we put together the income statement, we've got, we can see we've got 25,000 in net income and we've got a subtraction of 10,000 in dividends. So when we close these three accounts out, for the current year to start the new year, so then we can start brand new with revenues, expenses, and dividends, we will end up having um, $15,000 as our beginning retained earnings balance. So then let's say we start off this first year, or the, excuse me, the second year, with 15000 in retained earnings, and let's say we have another 100000 in revenues, another uh, 75000 in expenses, and another 10000 in dividends, then our beginning retained earnings would be the 15000 We would take into account the net income, subtract the dividends, and then we would roll up and we would have a new balance in retained earnings of 30000 
Then at the end of the year, we close out these three accounts to move forward to the new year. And then yet again, we should have 100,000 in revenues, 175 in expenses, and 10,000 in dividends. So then yet again, at the end of the third year, we would close out these three accounts, roll the new uh, change up into retained earnings, and now we would have 45,000 in retained earnings. So then you can see, based on all of this, you can see how the income statement are these two accounts right here that are uh, taking care of the revenues and expenses. Then when we move into this balance, the net change, into the retained earnings statement, we then pick up the retained earnings balance here, we pick add, add the net income balance here, and then we subtract out the dividend uh, declared uh, balance there. So then you can see, and it basically works as sort of a reconciliation for that retained earnings balance at the end of the year is what you will see in the balance sheet. Okay. So hopefully that helps on how to put together and how to get the big picture view of what these uh, financial statements look like. Because once we get to the balance sheet equation and we're putting together the balance sheet, then we just simply pick up all of our assets, all of our liabilities, and all of the stock items that run under those columns. Okay? So hopefully that helps, and uh, I'll see you in just again in another minute or two. I'm going to put another little recording out there for you as well for debits and credits.